Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MathDBase.com Anacast series. I'm your host, John Kissiedu. In this installment in the Development of Mathematics series, I will discuss Ratios, Proportions, Rates, and Variations, Part 2, Proportions. A proportion is an equality of ratios. Proportions are written using this symbol, read as. We say that the four numbers 16, 4, 12, and 3 are in proportion because the ratio of 16 to 4 is equal to the ratio of 12 to 3. Written another way, 16 is to 4 as 12 is to 3. Or in other words, 16 and 12 are related to 4 and 3, each by a factor of 4. The first and last terms of a proportion are called extremes. The second and third terms are called means. 16 and 3 are the extremes in this example, and 4 and 12 are the means. In any true proportion, the product of its means is equal to the product of its extremes. 16 times 3 is equal to 48, which is equal to 4 times 12, so the proportion is true. Let's look at a few other examples. Given the ratio 5 to 2, and we say that 5 is to 2 as some number is to 200, we are comparing two ratios and asking for the value of the second mean. Since the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes, 5 times 200 is equal to 2 times some number. 5 times 200 is equal to 1,000, so the missing number is 500. And we say that 5 is the 2, as 500 is the 200. If we know that the ratio of 18.2 to some number is proportional to the ratio of 7.3 to 9.1, we are setting up the equality of ratios 18.2 over some number equal to 7.3 over 9.1. Again, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So the product of some number times 7.3 is equal to the product of 18.2 and 9.1. If we divide both sides of this equation by 7.3, the unknown number will be left alone on the left side. After multiplying and dividing, the unknown number is equal to the mixed recurring decimal 22.6 with 8767132 as the repeating string of digits. We can write that mixed number as 22 and 251 over 365. See the decimal system series for a review of recurring decimals. In a small town's demographic survey, we are told that the ratio of the number of men to the number of women is 5 to 7. If there are 3,500 women in the town, what is the total number of adults? We first have to find the number of men in the town. Setting up a proportion, we have the ratio of the number of men to the number of women or the number of men to 3,500 equal to the ratio of 5 to 7. We can determine the number of men by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3,500. The right side can be simplified by first dividing 3,500 by 7 to get 500, then multiplying 500 by 5 to get 2,500. The number of men is 2,500, so the total number of adults is 2,500 plus 3,500 or 6,000. In geometry, we learn that two triangles are similar if their corresponding sides are in proportion. If triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, the length of sides AB and BC are 12 and 7, respectively. The length of side D is 7. What is the length of side EF? Since triangle ABC is proportional to triangle DEF, the length of side EF divided by the length of side BC is equal to the length of side DE divided by the length of side AB. We can substitute the values for the length of the sides and then solve the length of side EF by multiplying both sides of the equation by 7 to get 4 and 2 thirds. A number of other proportions are also true, including the ratio of the length of side EF to the length of side DE equal to the ratio of the length of side BC to the length of side AB. Substituting in the values, we can solve the length of side EF to get 4 and 2 thirds, as before. The length of a shadow cast by a tree is 75 feet long. At the same time, a man who is 5 feet 8 inches tall casts a shadow of 12 feet. How tall is the tree? First, we have to convert the man's height completely into feet, instead of feet and inches so that we have only one kind of unit of length. Since there are 12 inches in one foot, 8 inches equals 8 twelfths of a foot, or 2 thirds of a foot, and 5 feet 8 inches are equal to 5 and 2 thirds feet, or 17 thirds feet, converting the mixed number into an improper fraction. 
We can set up a proportion using the relative heights of the tree and man, and the lengths of their respective shadows, using similar triangles. The ratio of the height of the tree to the height of the man is equal to the ratio of the length of the shadow cast by the tree to the length of the shadow cast by the man. Substituting in the numbers that we have, the height of the tree divided by 17 thirds feet is equal to 75 feet over 12 feet. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 17 thirds feet to isolate the height of the tree on the left side, then canceling to simplify the right side, we get the mixed recurring decimal 35.416 continuous feet, which is equal to 35 and 5 twelfths feet. A direct proportion is a proportion in which the ratio of the first term to the second is equal to the ratio of the second term to the third. 3 to 9 to 27 is a direct proportion since 3 over 9 is equal to 9 over 27. An equality of ratios represents an inverse proportion if as one ratio increases, the other decreases. As speed increases, the time required to travel a specific distance decreases. Speed is the ratio of distance and time, such as in miles per hour or in kilometers per hour, and we are measuring it against the ratio of time taken to travel a specific distance of miles or kilometers. For example, if Fran drives to work at 50 miles per hour and arrives at work in one hour, how fast will she have to drive to get there in 45 minutes? The ratio of speeds is the unknown speed that Fran would have to drive to arrive at work in 45 minutes to 50 miles per hour, and the corresponding inverse ratio of times is 60 minutes to 45 minutes, or 4 over 3. Setting the two ratios equal to each other and solving for the unknown speed, we multiply both sides of the equation by 50 miles per hour and simplify to get a slightly higher speed of 66 and 2 thirds miles per hour. As we will see in the rates of work problems in the rates anacast, as either the number of workers or their rates of work increase, all other things remaining the same, the time taken to complete a task decreases another application of inverse proportions.